Hi everyone, in this video what I will be going through is how to calculate ROI and residual income and we will look at the effect of changes in sales, expenses, investable assets, and hurdle rate. So quickly, return on investment is a very common approach to evaluating investment alternatives and you can do this calculation before you actually do the, that investment or you can do it afterward. It's, a, it's an ongoing ROI often that a company will calculate an ROI. So you might do it before you invest and then you might each year or each quarter actually update these projections to make sure that your investment is actually returning the ROI that you expect. Be aware though that this is a fairly simplistic calculation and be aware that this information can be manipulated. So if you're ever looking at ROI calculations, you want to make sure that you understand the assumptions, you want to make sure that you're understanding where the information is being pulled from, etc. Residual income, on the other hand, is the amount of money that is contributed to an increase in owner's equity. And larger investment centers in a company will typically generate a larger residual income simply because they, larger, they, they are larger and they have greater assets employed. So the leverage is better. So let's take a look at a scenario. Here we have a couple of different divisions and we have the sales revenue, COGS and operating expenses, net operating income, investable assets, and the hurdle rate for this organization. The first thing that we will do is calculate the return on investment and residual income as it currently exists. So for division one, in order to calculate ROI, we take net operating income and we divide by the investable assets. So for division one, that's $350,000 divided by $1.1 million and it gives us an ROI of 31.82%. That's pretty good. Division two, we have $600,000 divided by $1.6 million and that gives us 37.5%. That's really good too. Now let's take a look at the residual income and how that's calculated. There, we take the net operating income and we divide by the average investable assets times the hurdle rate. So for division one, that's 350,000 minus 1.1 million times 7%. And that gives us a residual income of 273,000. Doing the same calculation for division two, we get $488,000. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with some of these numbers and by play around I mean we're going to change some assumptions and just see what happens to our ROI and our residual income. Each of these are to be considered separately from each other so they're not building upon each other at all. So the very first one that we're going to look at is let's assume that operating income is going to increase by 20%. So I've put a 1.2 there so that is being used in my calculations. So if we take for division one, if we take that $350,000 net operating income and multiply it by 1.2 and divide by the investable assets of 1.1 million, we now have an ROI for division one of 38.18%. And we do the same thing for division two and we're taking the net operating income of 600,000 and multiply that by 1.2 divide by 1.6 million, we get 45%. Now, in the residual income, we're using those new net operating income figures in order to come up with the residual income rate. And so for 420,000 minus the 1.1 million times 7%, we get 343,000. As compared to what we did in the first one, you can see how a 20% increase in operating income affects all of these numbers. The ROI goes up and the residual income goes up. In this next scenario, we're looking at op operating income decreasing by 15%. So I have my rate there of 0.85 and that's what I'm going to use for my calculations. So for division one, we take the 350,000 net operating income and we multiply it by 0.85. That gives us the 297,500. We divide by 1.1 million and get 27.05%. We do the same for division two 
and we get 31.88%. So there, when our operating income decreases, you can see how it affects the ROI. And the same thing with residual income, we take those newly calculated net operating income numbers and go through the same calculation for residual income, and we can see that the residual income numbers start to go down a bit when our operating income decreases. So you can see the sensitivity of how this is working comparing it the two divisions. The third scenario that we are going to do is that let's look at the company decides to invest $260,000 in each division and that generates an additional $110,000 of net income. Now what we do is we take the operating income of 350 and we want to add in $110,000 because that's the net operating income that this will add to that bottom line. The investable assets will go up as well. So the 1.1 million needs to have 260,000 added to it. Now we take that new net operating income figure and the new investable assets number and we get a new ROI of 33.82% for division one. The same calculations, we add some new net operating income to the existing $600,000. We also add some assets in for division two using the same numbers and we get a 38.17%. Uh, so now in residual income, we're just inputting those numbers that we calculated in the ROI and using the same hurdle rate of 7% and we get residual uh, income numbers that are shown there on the screen. So by investing some assets into each division that generates $110,000 additional net operating income, you can see that the ROI is going up as well as the uh, residual income is going up as well. And then finally, what we want to look at is if we decide to change the hurdle rate. Uh, we're going to change it from 7% to 5%. So here, we're using those original numbers where we have the 350,000 net operating income for division one, and we divide by $1.1 million, and we get 31.82%, because that's the same number as we did before, because the hurdle rate has not come into effect yet. Our new hurdle rate is going to be in calculating the residual income. Here, we are looking at that 5%, and since we have a lower hurdle rate, we actually have a higher residual income. So that 350,000 minus the 1.1 million times 5% gives us $295,000. Each one of these, you can build a, a template, you can build a model in Excel, that gives you the ability to take a look at ROI and residual income and be able to see how sensitive um, making decisions around ROI can be for different investment centers, different parts of your business. So if you invest some more into a particular division uh, or a particular department that you're tracking separately from others, then you can see the effect that different scenarios could have. So be Feel free to build your own template to be able to do this. And then, then what becomes important is actually keeping track of those invested assets and keeping track of your net operating income so that over time you can build into your scenario uh, updates as far as what the current operating income is, what the current investable assets are, etc. So I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll be happy to help and I'll talk to you soon on another video. Thanks.